In this video I will be talking about the treatment of retinal vein occlusion and it would be useful to look at my previous video of what a retinal vein occlusion is prior to viewing this video. Most patients with retinal vein occlusion have associated blood pressure so in some patients control of blood pressure and observation is all that is required. Retinal vein occlusion is divided into two main types, central retinal vein occlusion where the main vein is blocked and a branch retinal vein occlusion where a smaller vein is blocked. But both produce a similar problem in association with the capillaries, the fine blood vessels where there is an exchange of oxygen and nutrients. And two things happen to the capillaries, they can either become leaky or they can become blocked. If you have a branch retinal vein occlusion and you get leakage from the blood vessels in the centre of the retina or the macula, the traditional treatment for this is laser treatment to try and dry out the retina. And the laser treatment is applied in a grid fashion throughout the area of the leakage uh, and usually uh, over a period of several months the leakage can reduce. Laser treatment however is destructive uh, and sometimes the scars that are formed can enlarge with the passage of time. And also laser can only be applied if leakage is associated with a branch retinal vein occlusion and has not been proven to be of any benefit if there's leakage associated with a central retinal vein occlusion. There has been a recent development with the treatment of leakage both from branch and central retinal vein occlusions with an injection of a steroid called Ozidex as a small pellet directly into the eye under local anaesthesia as a day case procedure. The leakage is associated with inflammation and as I'm sure you're aware steroid damps down inflammation and this is how this particular steroid acts. So it's given directly where it's needed, there is no side effects associated with taking steroid tablets and the steroid slowly dissolves over a period of several months. So an improvement usually occurs over a period of several months and sometimes the injection does need to be repeated to sustain the effect. There are some side effects associated with the injection. There is the very slight risk of infection, one in a thousand uh, injections given, but also there is a, a proportion of patients where the steroid inside the eye can cause the pressure in the eye to rise. And there is a further treatment that is also now available with a different form of injection called the anti-VEGF injection drugs, such as Lucentis, Avastin and Ilea. And these drugs have been used in people with wet macular degeneration, a different condition, but also associated with leakage. And it has been shown that these injection treatments can also be effective in leakage associated with both a branch and a, a, a central retinal vein occlusion. And the injections are usually given once a month over a three month period, and then further top up injections may be required. If the main problem, however, is not leakage in the central part of the retina, but blockage, uh, this causes different problems. And if you have a central retinal vein occlusion and significant blockage of the circulation in the retina, the retina tries to develop new blood vessels to improve the situation. But unfortunately, for reasons we do not understand, these new blood vessels develop not within the retina, but within the iris, the coloured bit of tissue at the front of the eye. And these new blood vessels are also associated with scar tissue and at the, at the, in the area of the iris, at what's called the iris root, is an area where fluid, clear fluid called aqueous, drains out of the eye. Now this aqueous is produced at the front of the eye, circulates and drains away uh, and it's an equilibrium of production of fluid and drainage of fluid that keeps the eye pressure uh, as it should be. These abnormal blood vessels seen in association with severe poor circulation with a central retinal vein occlusion can cause the aqueous to no longer drain as way as adequately as it should and the pressure in the eye can increase and sometimes quite dramatically causing the eye to become very painful as well as not seeing a condition sometimes called thrombotic glaucoma or rubiotic glaucoma. And the treatment for this is to try and prevent it from occurring by applying extensive laser treatment to the peripheral retina to try and destroy this area of tissue that has poor circulation. Poor circulation in association with a branch retinal vein occlusion produces a different form of abnormal blood vessel and this, as you would expect, develops uh, within the retina or from the retina. But these abnormal blood vessels unfortunately are not helpful and the abnormal blood vessels in a branch retinal vein occlusion with poor circulation grow forwards and into the jelly that occupies the main eye cavity called the vitreous jelly. And what can happen is this jelly can then pull on these blood vessels and cause them to rupture, uh, resulting in a sudden worsening of vision with increased floaters due to hemorrhage within the main eye cavity. 
This can improve of its own accord and then laser is applied to the poor uh, area of retina that has poor circulation. Or sometimes, if the hemorrhage is extensive and does not want to clear, an operation called a vitrectomy is required to remove the hemorrhage and apply the laser at the same time.